So welcome to the Man Cave Classroom. I'm John Hegel along with my buddy Kevin Kogan and uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Westward Expansion but we're going to get a little deeper into how the communities and the towns are going to develop out there. So in previous lessons you probably saw us talk about this painting where you know more and more people are going to start to move out west and one of the big things that are going to get people out west is the gold rush. Um, however, you know, when we look at gold mining, it's nature's great lottery scheme. So if we're looking right here at this painting, we talked about this, and these are probably prospectors going out there mm -hmm. to kind of make it rich. But what happens when you don't make it rich? It's, it's, it's crazy. You know, you look at the amount of people that moved to California right. in a relatively short period of time. I think it was like one out of 10, no, one out of 20 right. actually struck it rich, right. actually found gold to make their life different um, and better. And, and for that, it was really the people who were already in California to begin with. Yeah. They had a, basically a two year head start on mining out the gold. And, and, and I think it was like one group of like 15, it was actually Chinese laborers who had yes. came over. They found like the equivalent of like $45 million in like three weeks. And something we'll get to separately, since we're talking about Chinese gold miners, they were treated horribly. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of them were only allowed to work what they called the tailings pile, which was the dirt that was already sifted through. Mm -hmm. And they were finding gold and they were successful. Um, if you've seen, I guess you could say probably cartoons, Bugs Bunny, or even Toy Story or holiday specials, you've probably seen some good examples of, of characters from this time period. Let me just start with this one. <laughs> Toy Story 2, all right? Prospector, big vocabulary word for this unit. Yep. You know, when we're looking at it, this was Prospector Pete or Sticky Pete. And then of course in Toy Story 2, there was there was Jesse that went along with them. Bullseye. Bullseye. He wanted to be the bad guy. Now, usually our students know who this is. Like the whole the whole classroom lights up. Oh my God, it's Sticky Pete! But, but then we put this on and, and there's quite a few people go, okay, well he's, he's from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Absolutely. What's his name? Dead silence. You think you have it, man? Cornelius? Yes. Cornelius. Yukon Cornelius. Yes. The reason why I bring these two up, these two are obviously going out there looking for gold. But you can see just in terms of attire, we're looking at two different regions. He's more towards a colder region in Alaska, you know, hence Yukon Cornelius. Yep. And, you know, the, Sneaky Pete was probably in the Southwest or, or, or California. I bring them up because of this. Gold mining is nature's great lottery scheme. So you do have a lot of people who are going to go out there. How many are going to make it rich? I, I would say, you know, compare that to how many people really win in lotto. So with that said, what do you do then? Well, can I sell stuff to these guys? I mean, where are they going to get... Food, tools, clothing, lodging, a haircut. It's, you know, I almost make a parallel. It's, it's the entrepreneurs. Yeah. They were the ones, the ones who, who that struck it rich, rich. Yes. during the gold rush. You know, those who had the forethought. I know in, in California, there was one guy who, when he heard gold was discovered, he didn't go out looking for gold. He went to every single store, right. bought up all the shovels, all the pickaxes, all of the tools necessary for mining of the gold. Because and then, those people and then who had the, gold fever yeah. didn't think yeah. to pack that stuff. Exactly. So he became like the first Home Depot. <laughs> and, and it was like, hey, you want, I bought this shovel from the general store in you know, middle of nowhere, California, for five bucks. He's now gonna resell it for 20 bucks. Right. There was like your typical egg breakfast, which would have been like 50 cents back east, sure. being sold for five bucks Absolutely. in California. You know, and I make a parallel to today. You know, we're still in the middle of this pandemic going on, and that's why we're doing these lessons like this. But, but those people, those restaurants, those businesses that could adapt, adapt to what was happening, they are the ones that survived. I can't tell you how many businesses in my hometown went, went the, do the doors are closed. Right. Brand new bakery shut down. Well, they see the trends. Yes. They're adapting and they're seeing the trends. Yes. You know, you look at um, who Blockbuster Video. <laughs> they could not adapt. Right. They had the resources. Right. They had everything at their disposal, but they didn't have the forethought to look into the future and be like, that's where 
movies are going. Nobody's going to watch movies electronically. On the, on the internet? On the internet? Yeah. That's what they, no, they want to come to the video store, rent a DVD or VHS, yeah. finish watching it, leave it in their car for five days, and then pay a $20 late yeah. fee. Um, that, that adapting, you're going to see quite a bit throughout this unit. So think in terms of adapting as we move forward. Here's the other thing, too. Think about your community. Think about you know the colonial era. Think about, for example, what is it a community is going to need? You have all these people like Gold Fever who went out there who you know didn't think to pack certain things. Now, if you think about what a community needs, I mean, let's look here. What are you going to sell these guys? I mean, again, to what Mr. Coburn was bringing up, you're going to sell them pickaxes, uh, you know, bandanas. You're going to sell them the appropriate clothing to gold mine in because you can't do it in cargo shorts. Last time I heard, um, if you're looking at you know, the colder regions, you know, much, much thicker coats, yeah. um, thicker hats as well. So what kind of items are we going to sell? Did we miss anything? What might be in demand? I mean, another big one, real estate. Land. Real estate, absolutely. There, there were people in California who went out and bought huge plots of land, then subdivided that land up. I, I would go out and buy 50 acres of land on the cheap. Sure. And then I would divide it up into little quarter acre plots and sell them each for 5,000, 10, whatever the price was. So I wasn't gonna do the work. So then when Stinky Pete realizes he's not gonna strike you rich of gold, now he's gotta buy a piece of land, now he's gotta buy supplies to buy a home, uh, to build a home, I should say. And now when we look at what's gonna to start to develop uh, in these communities, if you look around, all right, you're going to start to need banks, places where you're going to get food. Um, you're going to need to go to a butcher. You're going to need to go to restaurants, restaurants as pubs, well, and saloons. pubs, saloons, your uh, your hotels as well. You know, and I like that you brought up like what those people who didn't strike it rich. Guess where they stayed? They stayed in California. Yeah. You know, you look at the mass migration to California that takes place in the 1850s, 1860s. There's kind of a pause because of the Civil War, and then after the Civil War. There's, there's no wonder why today California is by far and away our most populated state. You know, people moved out there that didn't have the means right. to get back home. Right. We're like, all right, I guess we got to stay here and, and figure figure stuff out. You're spending all your money. If yep. you're, like, if you're on the East Coast, you're spending all your money to get out there. Yeah. There is no coming back. Yeah. You know, you're not just going to... And, and not only that, when we look at the map, when you're going from East to West in the middle of the... 1840s that's not exactly you know a five-hour flight it's a six-month journey a, a journey it's a six-month journey where hopefully you don't get caught in a snowstorm and eat each other Donner party look it up right <laughs> and, and if you went out there with people with buddies I mean you were a whole different group by the time you yeah. got there maybe one of you died you know yes. whatever the case may be somebody got lost um, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, I keep thinking of, you know, the American dream since you talked about the gold rush, and you think about people who go out there to strike it rich. Are people still going out there to strike it rich today? Yeah, it's a place called Vegas. You know, that, that's or still... Or Hollywood. Or Hollywood, you know? Those, you know? Actors are like, I'm going to go to Hollywood, and I'm right. going to become the next Tom Cruise, or... I can't think of a female actress right now. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, oh! Black Widow. Yeah. So this is your boom town, what we're looking at now. Anytime, anytime gold was discovered in a particular area, there was a picture like California. So everyone rushed to California. And then it was originally like San Francisco. And people would settle in that area. But once all the gold was mined out, then it was kind of died down. Then all of a sudden be like, oh my God, there's gold 10 miles north. Then everyone would rush <laughs> there. And you would, have, you would have what became known as a boom town. Yeah. Almost overnight, tents would spring up. And here's, here's store. Butcher. I think there's a church here too, right? Wasn't there? Like, I remember. There wasn't a church in this one. No, I couldn't. Yeah, right here. Go back. Whoop. Right there. Oh, the cross. Yeah. Wow. That's your little, very, little temporary very, church. You know. You know, this guy's cheap. probably selling beer to the to the prospectors after a hard day of work. It's quite possible. Yes. I mean, when you're looking here, the, the thing is that we're looking at towns developing out west. I mean, the fact that you have these communities developing in tents, and you have stores that are starting off in like you know tents gives you an idea of how quickly the population is going up. Uh, it gives you an idea of the demand for certain things and, and the entrepreneurs that were going out there to profit off of this, it gives you an idea that there was money to be made, not only in gold. Yep. Um, love this as well. Yeah, o overnight. I mean, overnight these towns would spring up and within weeks or months, towns were completed. 
How long did they last? And so the gold mines until the gold was gone. Yeah. It might so the be they, gone. they may have lasted four months. They may have lasted four years. They may have lasted forty years. But as soon as the gold was mined out of the ground or the silver was mined out of the ground, this they moved on. The boom town turns into a ghost town. Ghost town. You know, literally abandoning the streets. You know, and there are some great ghost towns that are still out west. You know, abandoned cities, you know, and like your typical tumbleweeds blowing oh, down the yeah. street. Like those actually exist in Arizona, New Mexico, parts of California. I mean, you go out to the southwest, there's a lot of, uh, you know, towns, you know, that you can see it. it, it there's not much of a population there. When you're looking at, at the stores that are nearby. Radiator Springs. Yep. From cars. Okay. You oh, know, cars. like in the middle of nowhere. Oh, gosh. You know, and then the big highway gets built, and then... Woo! Mater done. Yeah, Mater. You threw me off. You I went, did. You went Radiator Springs. And I'm thinking in history. I'm like, I don't know that. And we're well, we filming. talked about Toy Story. And we got to bring up cars. Out cars, man. That was yeah. good. Now, just to come back to this, you know, here you have these towns under construction. So, uh, you know, certain things you're going to need in communities. You know, you, you're going to need, of course, uh, hotels. You're going to need places to live. Um, I love this one. You have a saloon. You have a hotel. Love it. Drugstore. Drugstore. That's why I came back here. My students are always like, drugs? Drugs? Like, no, guys, it's a pharmacy. A pharmacy. You know, it's your, it's your, apothe Biting. your apothecary. Yeah. It's your, you know, you need a, your, the, the ibuprofen of the time, whatever it might have been, like herbs and spices or whatever. You know, the saloon and the hotel, and I don't know how well you go, how deep you go into what took place in these saloons, particularly, <laughs> particularly upstairs. At the saloon. I mean, you had gambling. Gambling. Uh, you had women of ill repute. Yeah. You know, who would... This was, you know, th you, know you had a lot of um, things that were going on, and it wasn't necessarily, you know, law and order in these <laughs> areas as well. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up. Right. There's no law and order in a lot of these areas. Right. So, basically, here we are. Mr. Heeg had a great day. He found $50 worth of gold. You know, and it's like, all right, well, it around. <laughs> I'm going to take it. That's it. You know, and, and, and we'll, we'll get into vigilanteism. Yeah, that would be another one. Yeah. Uh, if you even look here, so something I wanted to address with this picture is that if you look here, you know, they're developing rail lines. Yep. So this is going to be a pretty busy area, and, and with any business, location, location, location. And even if you go to uh, places where there are rail line stops, you know, a bar is not too far from that. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to see a lot of foot traffic here, so people are going to go to your drugstore or, you know, the early version of Rite Aid. Um, of course, it gets up. We start to see these towns develop. We now have a bank. We have a dentist. Post office. Post office. You know, a lot of, you know, while all this is going on, you still see, you know, it's still being developed. It's still being built. You know, we, we are graduating from the tents to places that actually have a, a much more solid or stable structure. Goes so, who goes down? Yeah, of course, leads. everybody leaves. Uh, ghost towns, you really don't hear them and, and, and used to, today. But, but to, to give the, 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 the viewers a better understanding of the ghost town, once the gold ran out, the first people to leave were the miners. Right. And then the business owners, were, they didn't have anybody to sell anything to. So it's like, all right, I've got a hotel. No one's checking in. I own the bar. No one's ordering any drinks. You know, I've got the, the general store. No one's buying anything. They would literally just have to pack up, close their doors, and leave. No one's going to buy their business from them. It's worthless now because there's nobody in that town. Right. And, and this is a good place to even talk about how certain businesses and communities, uh, their their livelihood is going to depend on that local industry or that local business. You know, you, when you're looking at certain areas where they're building cars or they're making steel or tourism is, a, is, is really big, you're going to see a lot of businesses that are going to develop that cater to that population. So there's a lot here that we talk about with gold mining. You know, again, panning it, you're not, you know, if you're this guy and you have a pan and a dream uh, as far as gold is concerned. And these rivers were freezing. Yeah. You know, the melted snow coming from the Sierra Nevada mountains coming down these rivers, you know, they were the ice cold water. Pretty to look at. Standing, <laughs> standing in them, knee deep all day. Eventually, all the surface gold is gone. And it took teams of men to go down into the earth 
and, and excavate gold from gold mines. And you're not going to be able to go down into the earth with a pickaxe yeah. pick and a pan. Yeah. So the one thing that you're going to need to get really go deep back to down in I, I love this one. Yeah. This is one of my, I, I analyze this oh, a yeah? lot in class. Then let's do it. You have, you have a bunch of guys at the opening, at the opening of a mine. And you can almost see the rail, like the, these little, like mini railroads, you know, with, with uh, uh, carts right. yes. that bring out to excavate the, mine, the, the, the dirt, the, the rock. But we see this babies. Yeah. You know. Two. Yeah. Two. Is that a baby? I don't think so. I think oh. it's just the one and like the older sister who's probably in charge of watching the younger sibling. Okay. My dad. Oh, there's another one here. Oh, all right. there's another one. Yep. Oh, it's know. a big family affair. Yeah. Must have been bring your kids to work day. Yes. <laughs> you know, and to think that that it became uh, okay. I, I didn't strike it rich on my own. You formed groups. And, and many of these groups wind up working for wealthier men, yep. you know, who, all right, I've got the equipment now, you go work for me, and I'll pay you an hourly right. wage, right. and I get the gold and the fine. Oh, yeah. So when we talk about getting deep into the earth, you know, you're not going to be able to get there through that, but uh, the one thing, we'll come back to the notes, there that's going to get you deeper is the dynamite. And, and you and I find it interesting as to who discovered it, the fact that they don't know it, and you know when you're looking at industrial use versus uh, military use, which really tells the tale here. So, dynamite. We'll start with this cartoon version of it. Um, you know, you're gonna light it. It's gonna blow up. Mainly used for industrial use. You're gonna get deeper into the mines. They're gonna use it again to blast through cliffs when it comes to building the railroads. And it was desperately needed. We had explosives that were used to build the Erie Canal. That were used. Uh, to help build the Transcontinental Railroad at the time, before the invention of dynamite, it was nitroglycerin. Right. The problem with nitroglycerin, it's so unstable. So unstable. So that literally, like, like it gets jostled around. Boom. boom. You know, and, and usually the person's job to to bring the nitroglycerin into the cave was usually a Chinese immigrant. Right. You know, it was because it was like. Go, go make him do it. And it's funny you should say that because there were sources and even like video clips they even saw the History Channel, I think it was the Westwood one where it's like, you know, you would light that fuse and then you'd run as fast as you can to get away from it because it's going to blow up. And chances are that that was usually mm -hmm. a Chinese immigrant. Yep. But when that all of a sudden starts to burn and then you get to a certain point, a wind blows and that goes out. Now you have this much of fuse, who's going to go and relight it? And he volunteers. You know, when you're talking about a fuse that's like that big, you know, you're not going to get any volunteers. Um, so you're going to take, you know, those workers who were underpaid, overworked, not appreciated, didn't have much of a choice. This was a livelihood. You know, they often chose, you know, your immigrant workers. And if it was, and usually when we get into the transcontinental railroad, oh my people, gosh, it was a lot of Irish immigrants as well. Yes, as well, and you the know, Mexicans also. And, and the Irish uh, stereotype of the, the drinking Irishman. You know, it actually became very prevalent because they were dealing with this really stressful situation that they, they drank heavily. So, right, that's what you're looking for, the, the veins of gold. There we go. There it is. Rich veins this, of gold. This is a vein of gold that you are going to blast. You know, who knows how deep this vein goes? It could be two feet, could be two miles. You know, you really don't know. But this is what you were looking for in, down in the earth. So now when it comes to blasting, we're going to come back to what we were talking about before when it comes to dynamite. You know, dynamite and explosives, everybody thinks military use, blowing up stuff, maybe terrorist activities. A lot of people, especially young people, when they're starting to learn about history, they don't think about dynamite or explosives in terms of industrial use. As a tool. As a tool. Yeah. So the guy who came up with the dynamite idea was Alfred Nobel. Usually right around here, somebody would go, that kind of sounds familiar, some people know. And then what winds up happening is that when you put a couple of things together and you take his first name away from it and go, well, did anybody ever hear of the Nobel Peace Prize? And people go, oh, Nobel came up with the Peace Prize. That's really interesting. How did he make his money? Well, by creating dynamite. And this is where the heads turn, it gets a little interesting. And there's Nobel Prizes in literature, science, technology, mathematics. Right. Uh, what's his name, that movie, right? Alfred Nash, about Beautiful Mind, won the Nobel Prize for yes. mathematics. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when it comes to that, and, and this is where it becomes interesting, you know, when you're talking about your, your name, um, your legacy, 
if you go back to the American Revolution, if you're going to bring up traitor, probably the word Benedict Arnold comes up because they, they happen to be synonymous. He did not want his name being synonymous with explosives and dynamite because what winds up happening is that this whole idea of using dynamite for industrial use then winds up being used for military use to kill thousands if not millions of people. So you really don't want your name associated with that. So what do you do? You make sure that your name is associated with something positive, the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's what we have with him. Anything else we need to add with this development? I mean, this is where we're starting to see towns build. I love the getting into the mines here. If you go back, just put it in perspective. Yeah, we go. Again. Yeah. Again. Again. Uh -huh. Where is it? Where is it? No, no, no. Go forward then. Where are we going? I saw one, and I wanted to just point it out. Keep going, keep going. What are we doing? There we go. Oh, here we go. Oh. Nope, one more. One more? No, where'd it go? One more? Oh, what the, come on. There it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. We only came put back it, to it twice. I know. The one that needs classes now. Put it into perspective. You know, this was the entrance to a mine. Oh, my God. This is the entrance to a mine. These are people standing on scaffolds that are probably supporting this mine. You know, we talk about the danger of having to go in there now and blast with dynamite. Right. You know, cave-ins, injuries, you know, just to kind of, you know, this is... The, Say this guy is six feet tall, if he is, six, 12, 18, we're looking at a 25 foot opening to this cave. Absolutely, so very, very dangerous. Yeah. Um, love talking about gold mining, love talking about westward expansion, but that'll be all that we'll talk about today for this topic. So thank you very much for watching. Um, you can follow us on Manic Dave Classroom on Twitter, also on Instagram. Um, you can also subscri uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do throw out a lot of videos that go along with what we're teaching and even things to supplement. Be good.